All right, if we're ready, I'll begin. I'm Rachel Woody, and we're doing this project on May 23rd, 2013, at the new tasting room for Ponzi Vineyards. And I am here to interview Nancy Ponzi, along with students Julian Adolf and Lydia Hines. So Nancy, you're an old veteran at this. I believe yeah. Winfield has interviewed you several times now. Yes. And so even though we do have a little bit of background on Salud and the vineyard workers and the Latino connection, I think I'd like to start us off with you telling us what is Salud. Salud, it's hard to say in succinctly. Uh, Salud is a program, it means to your health. Uh, Salud, it's used as a toast or salute your health. Uh, so it was the perfect name for this program, which brings uh, health care to our field workers. The field workers may be permanent, they really don't have migrant workers anymore, but the nature of the work and that they work at different places, getting insurance is almost impossible. Mm -hmm. So to provide health care for not only workers but their families as well, we got together as a wineries here in the Willamette Valley and we raised money through a major auction, a very uh, fancy auction, black tie auction, so we raised lots of money and we provide primary health care for, this year we've already had almost 4,000 people sign up. Wow. It's huge. Yes. So how long would you say it took yourself and the other wineries to get it going? Um, we're about in our 25th year, I think, of doing this. Uh, the first five years we gave money to other clinics. There are uh, clinics for um, field workers or you know, workers in general who can't, who don't have access to health care. But then we realized we could do a much better job and reach more people by going to the workers rather than asking them to come into McMinnville or Cornelius to a clinic. So we started uh, partnering with some of the other um, uh, health people, um, uh, Providence, Mercy Care, and so forth, that have health vans, mm -hmm. and we set up a clinic date and go out to the vineyard, and they come. And especially as as the word has gone, it took a long time to uh, uh, get the trust of the workers, that what we wanted to do was give them primary health care, preventive health care, dental care, mm -hmm. uh, no strings attached, and we've proven ourselves trustworthy, and, and it's a huge success. Um, however, like most other programs, it's also in high demand now. Yes, of course. Is it fair to say that Salud was your idea, or are you in a small group of people? Oh, you know, I think very few ideas are attributed to one person. It was definitely a brainstorming situation, and um, to be real honest, I didn't know. We pair with a, the major hospital in Western Washington County. They're, they're the main sponsors, and they're the ones who really said, let's do something. Mm -hmm. um, that wasn't what they had in mind, but said, okay, let's do something, and this will be the benefit. And now they are so proud of it. It's a big, big deal for the, the, the hospital itself. There's the other side of it for the hospital, not only are they doing good for people, mm -hmm. we have cut down the emergency room use tremendously. So this is a huge benefit to the hospital as well. So they're, they've got a win-win situation. And the wineries donate the wine, so there you go. <laughs> right. So has the mission remained the same or has it evolved over time? It really hasn't changed. It has evolved in the sense that it's deepened and we understand more the meaning of what we're doing and, and the capabilities of what we can do and things that we can't do. Mm -hmm. We can't take care of people who are in uh, a terminal health situation, that sort of thing. We try to help as we can, but we also have to recognize our limits. But, um, uh, for example, the dental care, that's become, it's, it's a much bigger thing than I thought. Another thing recently done is a video for the workers of, in Spanish uh, for stretching ex exercises before they go to work in the field. Um, their backs get hurt just like everybody else's backs get hurt, yeah, and it's their major problem. So um, this is done on 
not with having you know Nurse Nancy come in and say, okay, everybody, let's do a salute to the sun. Um, it's on their level and it's being very, very well received. Good, good. Now, what were the first few years like as far as trying to garner support, either with the hospital or the larger community? Well, the hospital came to us and said they would like to do something partnering with wineries. And this was when, this, you know, over 25 years ago, when it wasn't really as big a deal as it is now. So, for the first few years, what was it like getting support within the community or with the other wineries? It was, uh, some of the wineries were really easy. You could explain and they were on board right away. Others, I had to kind of do a major arm twisting thing. And that remains the case to, to some extent. Um, we can only have so many wineries actually participate in the auction, but every winery in the valley benefits from Salute. Mm -hmm. And we have many other opportunities for them to participate. So um, we continue doing this, explaining, um, you know, your workers are benefiting. You need to step up a little bit and support it. Mm -hmm. I would say that uh, for, the, for the most part, the wine community is very generous and, and very protective and uh, caring for their workers. Now, I believe Salute has been hailed as a very uniquely Oregon program, and I heard from our conversations with Leda, the, the, the nurse there, the nurse there, um, that California is now hoping to emulate something similar. Do you think uh, that something like Salute will be able to catch on, or do you think this will remain uniquely Oregon? I would be really surprised to see something like this work in California. It's a bigger region, and the competitive nature of the wineries in California is quite different from, from here. Mm -hmm. and that is, this is a really distinct thing here. So almost every visitor here comments they can't believe that we really and truly work cooperatively on not only Salute, but almost every other major um, the international Pinot Noir celebration. Mm -hmm. That's a cooperative thing. People volunteer time. We switch around who's in, who's out. Uh, this. Mm, I just don't see that quite working in California. I hope so. Fair enough. Is there anything else you would like to share with us about Salute before I have Julian and Lydia ask more general Latino vineyard worker questions? Well, just look up the website and see how we're doing, and we have a little button that says you can donate. <laughs> All right, duly noted, and we should make sure we emphasize that in the exhibit. Good. Well, thank you, Nancy. I'm going to have Jillian and Lydia ask you a question each. Okay. So I am pretty sure there are about three generations of Latino and Latina workers. Um, over the years, with um, the uh, their arrival, both working in the vineyards and your work with Salud, how has your relationship with the Latino workers evolved? Well, my relationship probably goes back further than some because. Um, uh, when I was young, I lived in Venezuela, so I have a kind of soft spot for anybody Hispanic to start out with. Um, I also went to the University of Mexico. So um, even though I grew up in California, I always really loved everything Latin. I don't know, I married an Italian. I don't know what happened. <laughs> but, um, uh, so our relationship has always been very good and, and very strong. Uh, we've had many, many incidents through the years that um, we've had the opportunity to go further than just em employ. And uh, even in our employment, we try to be very fair, pay at least wages that are comparable. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, the workers are they're in a very vulnerable position. They have almost no rights at all. I mean, who do they complain to? So uh, if, if the employers aren't honorable and fair, they're in a bad situation. So we've tried to set an example. And I think the wine community overall has been exemplary of that. Um, there are incidents that, uh, you know, they have problems with their families. They, uh, um, they need perhaps help with purchasing a home. 
We have a situation right now of one of our major workers. He's a citizen. He's a U.S. citizen. He's worked farm work. He can't get a loan. He has money in the bank, but because he has no credit rating, he has no credit card, because he's taken care of himself all these years, he can't buy a home. So we are trying to help with that, to, to, with what leverage we might have through the bank to explain, hey, you got a really solid guy here, <laughs> go for it. <laughs> so there's, there's so many things like that, and of course, you know, illnesses come, and people have family in Latin America that they need to go see. Um, so every, I, I just, I, I hear stories all the time from the wine community of people that are going way out of their way uh, to help the workers. Now, these are not people, these are not people who want charity, they want work, and they want to be treated with dignity. So we try to do that. Interesting. Um, could you speak to the daily life for Latino and Latina employees and how it has changed since you started Ponzi? <laughs> well, I'll tell you my first experience. I'm the very first worker that we hired, and this is probably not the best thing to say, except it, it was very cold. See, we make wine here in the late winter, and in our winery, when we were making it in our winery, which is nothing like this one, um, it was pretty miserable. We didn't have like hot water to wash your hands on or wash down the floor or anything. And the main worker, the cleanup worker, was me. And I finally realized I could hire somebody, you know, for not that much an hour, which I was getting nothing. <laughs> I could get somebody to help. And that was, you know, realized. And there are people who like these jobs. I mean, these are, it's, it's easy to say it's unskilled work, but there is a skill. I mean, you have to have, you, you have, to have people who are thinking. I mean, you don't just wash down the floor, you have to look and see where it needs to be washed down. Um, there's, and that goes all the way through. Right now, uh, the crew that we have, and we have a pretty permanent core crew, they are so skilled in the vineyard, there's no way I would go out and try to tell them how to do something. They know so much more than I do. They are so valuable. And it just, when I hear people say, oh, well, anybody can do that. <laughs> yeah, show me. <laughs> <laughs> Did I answer your question? Yes. Do either of you have follow-up questions? Um, it's more of a personal question for you. Um, mm -hmm. I studied abroad in Oaxaca, Mexico um, last year, and I was just wondering what kind of brought, why you grew up in Venezuela, or what brought your family to that country? Oh, when well, my father was in the oil business. Okay. Venezuela, of course, is a major oil producer. Uh, again, it sounds a little bit more glamorous than it was. It wasn't all that glamorous. We, <laughs> we lived out in the, what you call the monte. Yeah. <laughs> It wasn't the ideal place to grow up, but was that? Looking back. <laughs> well, it's fair to say it's had great influence on your continued and lifelong work with the winery and the community of Latino, Latinas. Well, I would hope so. I, I have such regard for them. Any other questions from our other audience? Oh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much, Nancy. It's always a pleasure. Oh, oh you're welcome.